Bill O'Reilly here, Thursday, November 19th, 2020. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening across our nation. COVID fatalities top a quarter million in the USA. Ohio institutes a mandatory curfew. New York City closing all public schools. North Dakota, now the worst place on earth for COVID. New polls show more Americans happier President Trump lost than Joe Biden won. Also ahead, there are valid election lawsuits, and we will run them down. But first, COVID deaths passing 250,000 in America, more than any other country. Hospitalizations also at record highs, 60,000 folks being treated daily for the virus. At least two vaccines on the way could be available by Christmas. That will diminish COVID, but it will be a factor for the first part of 2021. Ohio Governor DeWine issuing a curfew for all residents. Folks in the Buckeye State must stay home between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. for the next 21 days. Exceptions include emergency workers and those who need medical care. Critics say the curfew will do nothing to slow down the contagion, but who knows. New York City closing all public schools again for in-person instruction starting today. Mayor de Blasio announcing his decision on Twitter, saying drastic measures must be taken to fight the second wave. City school district is the largest in the country with more than a million kids. North Dakota, North Dakota, now reporting the world's highest COVID mortality rate, 17 deaths per million. South Dakota takes third place right behind North Dakota. Both states have a total population of less than 2 million combined, but more than 150,000 cases. Health officials there say hospitals are at 100% capacity right now. Survey from Monmouth showing 34% of Americans were simply happy Donald Trump lost the election compared to just 25% who are happy that Biden won. I told you it was all about Trump. More than a third of voters report general unhappiness with the entire process. One in 10 say the 2020 race made them extremely angry, and those are all Trump supporters. In a moment, the election contest is still underway. We'll run down the pending lawsuits when we come right back. Well, I got a crash course in home title theft. I hope you pray this crime never happens to you. It can ruin you financially. Here's how easy it is. The legal titles to our homes are digitized and kept on government and business servers in the cloud. A cyber thief hacks these to find your home's title, forges your signature on a quitclaim deed, stating you sold your home. Then loans are taken out against your home until all your equity is gone and you're in debt. You will not know until the collection calls start pouring in. Insurance, banks, common identity theft programs will not protect you. Home Title Lock protects you and puts a barrier around your home's title. The instant they detect tampering, they shut it down. Please go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you are already a victim. Then use code RADIO for 30 free days of protection. That's code RADIO at HomeTitleLock.com. Code RADIO at HomeTitleLock.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. President Trump's lawyers telling the country that they are still litigating the vote, but there is not much chance it will be overturned. However, I want to run down the current lawsuits that are unresolved. First, Arizona. The Republican Party there trying to block the certification of election results in the state's most populous county, Maricopa, that's Phoenix, until the court rules on the party's lawsuit asking for a complete new hand recount in Arizona. State judge has not issued a decision. Hearings are ongoing. In Georgia, the count is over. The hand recount is over. We should know shortly the results. The rumor is Biden will still win the state. Attorneys have sued to block the certification of that, however. 
GOP lawyers allege Georgia illegally changed the process for handling absentee ballots. We'll see. A judge is scheduled a hearing in the Peach State today, but again, with the hand recount, Georgia will probably remain in Biden territory. In Michigan, chaos. President Trump's campaign trying to block the certification of election results in Wayne County, that's Detroit. Quote, Wayne County allowed fraud and incompetence to corrupt the conduct of the election. Mr. Trump's legal team alleges observers were prevented from being able to properly watch the vote counting. That case is pending. In Nevada, Mr. Trump's campaign is asking a judge to nullify the state's election results or set them aside and declare the president the winner, arguing that illegal or improper votes were cast and the use of optical scanning to process signatures on mail-in ballots violates state law. That case is pending. In Pennsylvania, this is the most crucial case. The Trump campaign aims to stop the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania from certifying the election results, alleging Philadelphia and six other counties wrongly allowed voters to correct problems with mail-in ballots, and also there is a general challenge to votes counted after election day because Pennsylvania law has a deadline. Now, as I said, this is the big one that might go to the Supreme Court. But everyone in America should understand that because the election certification is completed by December 11th, it will be very difficult for all of these court challenges to be settled by that. Only the Supreme Court can stop the process. And that would be a shock, as the judiciary branch in America does not want to decide elections. Now, it did in the year 2000, Gore versus Bush. Nevertheless, what's happening now, right now, it's possible that Donald Trump and Joe Biden will have an impasse. It's possible, but not possible. Probable. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve the message by writing it. Disagree? I want to hear from you. Bill at BillOReilly.com. And please consider my new book for a Christmas gift, Killing Crazy Horse. In a moment, something you might not know. By now, you've heard me speak about Jeff Brown, my go-to tech expert, and his firm, Brownstone Research. His firm called the exact peak of the dot-com boom and just issued another major prediction. So if you've got money invested in the market, especially in popular tech stocks, this is critical information. Jeff sat down with Tech Minute's Chris Hurt to discuss something shocking he believes is on the verge of happening. So you can watch that interview at Bill5G.com right now. That's Bill5G.com. Jeff's top-notch newsletter provides my listeners with research to let them know of the best tech companies and the biggest market opportunities before they appear on Wall Street's radar. It's the only way to win in the market. Jeff's track record speaks for itself. He's recommended the number one S&P stock of 2016, 18, and 19. His subscribers see gains such as 432% and more in just days sometimes. So please go to bill5g.com. That's bill5g.com now. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. 157 years ago today, President Abraham Lincoln delivered a short address on a quiet field in Pennsylvania. On that spot, four months earlier, 50,000 Americans were either killed or wounded in a battle that was as ferocious as anything ever seen on the planet. President Lincoln's words will be remembered as one of the great speeches in human history, the Gettysburg Address. After that brutal battle in 1863, the president was invited to consecrate a cemetery at the site, many believe was the turning point of the entire Civil War. The speech was just 270 words long, beginning with the iconic phrase, four score and seven years ago. 
Surrounded by Union soldiers and members of his cabinet, Abe Lincoln delivered the address in less than three minutes. Few in attendance could actually hear what Abe was saying. Copies of his speech were published in newspapers around the country. The Philadelphia Inquirer ran the entire copy of the speech on its front page. Now, the address is regarded, along with Shakespeare, as the finest prose in the English language. At the 75th anniversary of the battle, Franklin Roosevelt said, quote, Immortal deeds and immortal words have created here at Gettysburg a shrine of American patriotism, words in which Abraham Lincoln expressed the simple faith for which they died, unquote. Martin Luther King Jr. referenced Lincoln's words in the opening line of his I Have a Dream speech, stating, quote, five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation, unquote. And here's something else you might not know. I, your humble correspondent, have seen the actual written Gettysburg Address. It is in the Lincoln bedroom at the White House. President Obama was kind enough to personally show it to me after I interviewed him. Back after this. Investors, are you seeking steady cash flow, ready to diversify? Have you considered a proven real estate investment fund? NRIA is one of the nation's leading realty specialists and offers 10% annualized monthly payouts with bonuses targeted to 21%. That's right, you could receive steady 10% return monthly payments with bonuses. You know, they specialize in realty investing done right. Even use your 401k or IRA to invest. NRIA's 15-year track record and $1.2 billion in new construction development backs you. So learn how you can invest in this hard asset real estate cash flow fund today and receive 10% annualized monthly payouts with bonuses. This is something savvy investors should research and consider. Please call now, 201-210-2727, 201-210-2727, or visit nria.net. An offer to buy or sell any security is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. National is a real estate development firm. See us at nria.net. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you. <laughs> 